I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 117 of the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers here, as always, with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. So today we're talking about how to be a happier sports and activities parent. Um, Mm. I love this topic. I feel like we have a lot to say. Um, We did address this topic like two years ago, um, but there's so much, so much has changed and we have so much more to say. So it's just worth revisiting. And especially as we kick off a new school year, a lot of kids are starting new sports and activities as well. Yeah, that was episode 18. So 99 episodes ago. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that is crazy. (laughs) And I actually, I went back and listened to a bit of it and yeah, so much has changed. So yeah, um, yeah. so this is going to be great. Um, Also, I want to let everybody know that Katie is coming up at the very end of this episode. Um, You guys heard Katie recently on episode 114 when we talked about breastfeeding. She actually was here with us the whole time, but she also comes on monthly with me to give a little snapshot of her life as a mom with two really little ones at home. So it's a fun segment. Just listen all the way to the end of our conversation and then that will air at the end. Um, But let's talk about our sponsor first, and that is Kind Snack. So, Megan, this is so funny. You texted me the other day, and you were like, a Kind Bar literally kept me alive today. And we've been working with them as a sponsor for a few months now. So, yeah, yeah, why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so I um, have a new job where I'm um, basically going right from radio to this other place, and my day has changed dramatically um, in in my schedule, and I don't have as much time. Like, in the morning, I used to be able to kind of have a leisurely breakfast, and I didn't figure out when I was going to eat right in there so i did have a kind bar it was the um it was the breakfast peanut butter bar i believe yes which is one those of my are favorite. so good they're so good and it like saved my life because i was getting to the point where i was like you know it's like 11 a.m i haven't yeah. eaten i'm starting to get really hangry and i'm trying to focus because it's a new job yep. and i'm you know and i said it was like do 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 I know. And when you realize realize that it's in your purse, that happens to me sometimes. Like I realize I I have one on me and I'm like, yes, this is so much better. So um, you guys, if you've been listening, you've heard us talk about Kind. But what they have going on right now is a way to try 10 Kind bars for free. And they've got crazy cool flavors that I hadn't seen in some of the stores. So if you want to mix it up, um, get some really healthy, wholesome snacks for you. And we always say this, like, it's not like you can't give them to your kids, but I think you and I are pretty clear. Like I I (laughs) These are mommy (laughs) snacks. Um, So all you have to do is pay shipping and this sampler box will come to you. And it's part of their kinds snack club where you'll receive monthly snacks at a discount and get members only bonuses. So the first part of that snack club is this sampler box of 10 kind bars. You just pay shipping. That's it. Um, So to go grab yours, go to kindsnacks.com slash mom. So that's kindsnacks.com slash M-O-M. And there you'll see full details on the snack club, what's involved in that. And also you can just see those fun flavors that will come to your door. I have heard from listeners who've tried this out. It's been really fun because we have been working with them for a few months now. So yeah. Um, Yeah. Just people just getting hooked on them. They're delicious. Yes. Agreed. So thanks to Kind. Okay. So we've got some tips for you guys on being a happier sports and activities parent. And we're approaching this, I think, mostly from the mom angle, because if you're bringing your little kids or big kids to activities year after year, season after yes. season, I think we have some ways to sort of make that work in your family and right. um, not let it drive you nuts as a mom. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have to start this with a story. And I very yes, rarely, <laughs> I very rarely, I like, I don't want this story to sound judgmental. It's really not. But I observed a mom at a swim lesson recently and I just, I felt so bad for her. So she was Violet's four and a half and she just finished up a summer of some swim lessons. This mom also had a child who was about that age, um, but it, the child was pretty new to swim. And the mom was telling me on the sidelines that, you know, they haven't had a lot of opportunities for her four year old to really practice or learn to swim and that she's still pretty much. you know, a danger to herself in the water, which I totally get. My older (laughs) kids were not really safe swimmers until they were more like six or seven. So I totally get it. Um, But she was visibly stressed and worried about her child 
uh, her child's safety while in the swim lesson. And it kind of blew, it kind of blew my mind because, you know, if you've ever been to a preschool level swim lesson, they kind of sit either on the steps or sometimes they have those sort of um, little platforms that they lower Mm. into the water. And um, these lessons were no more than two kids per teacher. So it was not a big group lesson. They were semi-private and her daughter was at least four. So she wasn't right. like an 18 month old, like flailing like, around. Exactly. Going like under and being like, this is fun. Yeah. yeah four year olds can generally follow directions, especially right. ones that don't have any developmental issues going on. Like, so the teacher would say, okay, stay on the steps. And this little girl, would, she was playing on the steps like a four year old. She wasn't launching herself out or being, you know, right. defiant to the teacher. And the mom, no joke, kept getting up and going over like she was afraid her child was going to drown. The child was within two or three feet no maybe like arm's maybe, length like yes yeah. yeah arm's length or maybe two arm's lengths from a trained and certified swim instructor who does this all the who time who does this all day long and I just like I, I think my reaction at first was like come on lady like your kid's yeah. not gonna drown while we're all sitting there but then I, I kind of started to feel bad for her because I feel like nobody had I, I wanted to tell her like the, these are trained swim instructors and you are here like you have the not the privilege but you you get to outsource somebody else teaching yeah. your child to you, swim. you could go like work you, out or something. you could go work out you could stare <laughs> yeah. at your phone you could make right. small talk with me i'm friendly yeah. um let the swim teacher do his job and i felt so bad for the swim teacher um right who was like because she kept coming every time the swim teacher was with the other kid um, again, within two arms lengths and with 20 other adults all right there, she would go right over. I mean, right over, like hovering over the steps and start talking to her daughter. You need to sit down, sit on your bottom. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. And well, so, and you anyway. know, some of that, too. I mean, she may have been. This is where I think it's so tricky sometimes with these things. Like, like you said, no one told her. Yeah. This is not your time to parent. Yes. Like you can stop. And was she, you know, worried about her child's safety? Probably. But she may also have been worried about her child not following directions yep. and like having to yes. hover and correct her in front of the teacher. So the right. teacher would understand that she was like on a good it. Mom. I, yes. Yeah. A good mom. And that, yeah, that would be so stressful. And I do think that there is a bit of that in a lot of these kind of uh, these like activities where they're little because you don't know what your level of participation is supposed to be. And I will say, unless it says parent involvement or parent participation in the description, your involvement is none. Yes. (laughs) The less, the better. And if so, yeah. And if you live in an area like I do, which I would characterize as fairly affluent with a lot of very involved parents and all the good and bad that comes with that, you might be uh, pressured or convinced by seeing what's around you to think that it is your job to be involved and watch and participate in every activity. So we're going to get into all that, but I felt like setting that stage because I just, in the end, I felt bad for her. Like I felt like, yes, this is, this is a half hour. You could do something else, or you could just, you could just trust the teacher and watch and let your daughter sort of see how she does. I Mm -hmm. promise she's not going to fall to the bottom of the pool with all of us watching. That's what I wanted to say, but um, (laughs) okay. So how do we kind of, you know, make these activities fun for us and our kids. And so we're going to have some some concrete tips, I think. Um, All right. I'll start with one, and it's just kind of a quick one. And this is, I think my tips in general will probably skew younger kids, and yours probably older, because that's where we are. But my first tip is mommy and me is optional. And if mommy isn't into it, mommy don't have to do it. So when you're, (laughs) when you have a baby, you will start hearing about all of the mommy and me, everything from social groups to like gymboree type, like activity, you know, like, um, what am I trying to say? Like not tumbling, but like more physical activity for babies and real stuff, motor skill stuff. Thank you. Um, and then, you know, music classes and dance classes and swim classes and everything. I mean, not to be crass about it but they want your money from the time the baby oh, yeah. is born so the there sooner are, they can convince you that that uh, yes. your baby needs that stimulation and yeah. activity the better so yeah. right so i just want to put it out there that you don't have to do any mommy and me stuff and if you do want to do mommy and me stuff mommy is the operative word so what right. mommy likes to do is what you guys do. So if it feels social to you or something to have on your schedule to get out of the house, or if you're full-time working and you like that opportunity to connect with other parents, maybe on the weekend, if it's like a Saturday morning, mommy and me swim, go for it. But yeah, the baby doesn't need it. You don't have to pay a lot of money to get out and meet other moms. There are a lot of free or really inexpensive ways to do that. So that's all. Mommy and me is optional. And if mommy doesn't want to do it, mommy don't have to do it. 
I, I was so stressed. I remember being so stressed out when Isaac was a baby because Jacob was two. And I thought it was so important to this was my very intensive mothering phase. Yes. Um, I thought it was really important that he become socialized like like he wasn't getting socialized with like his brother and me right. and his all dad the cousins and, and all the cousins and everybody else <laughs> yeah it, and that he you know learned to i don't know make it like become surrounded by music there's like immersive oh, yeah. experiences there's yeah. lots of words that they'll use and, and key phrases but um but i was stressed because jacob was bigger and there was no there weren't really many classes yeah. that you could have different aged kids at and I was really stressed about that for a while. And I think I actually found one where it was like more like a family thing. And mm-hmm. it was terrible like because mm-hmm. I couldn't keep my two year old. My two year old yeah. was not interested in sitting on the floor listening to whatever was going on with the babies. And it was just so stressful. And I kind of laugh at myself now thinking like how important that was to me. Right. And I didn't care. I, I had plenty to do at home and I had plenty to keep me busy. And I already had people to talk to. So I didn't really need the class. Right. Um, so I wish I'd given myself a pass on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So... Well, should I, should yeah, I toss out it. one of mine? Well, mine is older, right? Yeah. So I think one thing I learned this year, and this used to stress me out too. Gosh, I was a lot more stressed than I thought I was for <laughs> a time. Um, I really was bummed that my older two kids never really got into theater. Uh, Isaac briefly kind of d- dabbled, uh, dipped a toe in, did not enjoy it, got out. Um, and then the younger ones even really just weren't into it. And I was like, that's my thing. I wish my kids were really into theater. And it really took them until like this year. To all the, well, it took Hamilton basically. Yeah. Was, was <laughs> Thank the, you, Lin Manuel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but even that, like the the um, it actually took me going. You know, you like theater. Why don't you just sign up and do a show? And so William did High School Musical Junior with his cousin Jack, and that was really. I mean, but Hamilton kind of like got him pre- like prepped, got him mm-hmm. intrigued, primed, and then. <laughs> Yes, primed. And then this show got him hooked. And what was kind of cool about it is because it wasn't one of those huge productions. They have we have a really good organization that I actually directed for um, earlier this summer. And they do like four big musicals a year, but they're huge, like 100 kids and uh, all ages. And they're kind of not expensive, but it's an investment, a couple hundred bucks. And there's some parent involvement and stuff. So I had kind of been I wanted the kids to do that, but I also didn't want to do it unless they were really into the idea. Right. But the middle school musical was high school musical at the middle school. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of funny. Um, Was so much easier. It was just like really laid back. The cast wasn't huge. We'll got a big part. Um without having to like have any experience yeah. and it wasn't very expensive and it wasn't like a huge time commitment. And that was a really good way to ease in. So I guess my first tip is be patient. Your kid mm-hmm. might not be into something now, but that doesn't mean they'll never get into it. And you can almost like, if you just watch, you'll see when that perfect opportunity is mm-hmm. to kind of get them to just get them and push them in the right direction. And if you do it when they're resisting, I think it could backfire. And so I'm glad I didn't now. Yeah, that is Uh, so wise. Do you feel like I have a question for you on that? Because I feel like it's very tempting. My kids are, you know, nine, seven and four. Their personalities are really starting to like, you know, I feel like I really know who they are and I'm starting to see what I think they'd be good at. Um, And it's really hard not to, I'm not a pushy sports parent, but it's even for me, it's hard not to like, think, well, oh my gosh, she would be really well f- suited for X, Y, Z, or yeah. he would be really good at music if I, you know, if I pushed that a little bit. Did, did that happen for you? And did you have to consciously back off or, or even does that change? Because I don't yeah. know, maybe my nine year old yeah. at 13 is a different, is ready for something totally different than what I think she's going to be really good at. Yeah. I mean, I, my kids have not had formal most of them had not have not had like formal music lessons, for example. But I think music education is really important. Yeah. And I've actually faced that this year. The the challenge that Will or Owen is going to middle school really didn't want to be in band or choir. Like mm-hmm. really didn't want to. And made like it very clear. And he's a very <laughs> stubborn and determined yeah. kid. He's also done activities that I've signed him up for, like baseball, because he's done baseball now for four years and all of his cousins play and friends of ours coach. And it just like makes sense that he would do that. Otherwise, he's the kind of kid who could stay inside. Yeah. And just like stare at a computer all day. Yeah. Um, so I've pushed him into things before and then I've not. Like I decided yeah. not to make a big deal about the choir and band thing. I mean, this is going to be a big deal for him already. He wants to do phys ed. There's a choice. They get to pick right. one of the three. Right. Um, I let Will do the same thing, but William really needs the physical education. Like he needs the activity yeah. and um, movement more than he needs choir yeah. band because the kids are, my kids are surrounded by music all the time. Yes. So I kind of also feel like it depends what their needs are and sometimes yep. it's not worth the fight. Yeah. Um, I also think high school is where suddenly like kids can kind of choose for themselves and they might be interested in something they weren't before. Right. 
Um, and they have all these options all of a sudden. And in middle school, I don't feel like pushing my kids yeah. to do much of anything except to survive middle school. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, I don't know. With the younger yeah. kids like Clara, it's so funny. I was at the at the youth fair the other day watching the kids talent show. And this little girl got up and, and Clara has it very clear. She does not want to take dance lessons, but mm -hmm. I don't think she truly understands what dance is. Mm -hmm. So I think she thinks ballet. Yeah. But this girl was doing like, it was like acrobatic dance mm -hmm. and like there was contortionism and yeah. all kinds of like stretchy bendy stuff. And that's what Clara loves the most. So yeah. I think I'm going to try to find a way to like subtly point her toward that yeah. without making a big deal. Like you should be in dance cause you're right. great at it. Right. Um, and honestly like YouTube is a great place for that. Stuff yeah. Cause you can find videos of kids doing all kinds of cool stuff or like, yeah, that's a great shows point. Like America's got talent. And yes. stuff. So yeah. I'm curious, do you have in mind something you think like, uh, like Alexa would be really uh, Alexa, <laughs> Allegra. I was just thinking of like, not the, not the allergy med, Megan, say the other one. <laughs> Allegra would be really good at. <laughs> um, you know, it's more probably Reed, I think, would be probably very, very good at music. Um, okay. And if, like, if I wanted to push harder, or, yeah, Allegra's very artistic. Yeah, I didn't have anything specific, except that, you know, it's tempting to want to specialize them, even if they haven't, even if you're not that kind of a pushy parent, I guess, yeah. because you start to see their talents so i think right. it's interesting yeah. and um, i think sometimes you can do it subtly like with a, yes. like a camp yeah like with yes. a quick little camp or like yep. an after school activity or something where it's not like this is now going to be your thing right right yeah. and i think as long as you know everyone who knows us knows our vibe is kind of like stay open you can always change like you can always right. change your mind like nothing is forever so i think as long as you kind of keep that in the back of your mind so yeah um okay so my next tip is probably like the cornerstone of how I feel about this right now, which may change. But I feel like younger siblings and the family unit matter as much as the player or the kid in the activity. Mm -hmm. um, and that has been important to us to the point that a couple of years ago, Allegra was in Taekwondo twice a week and we did it for about six months and I pulled her. We quit. Be not because of her, because it was too hard for me to have at the time, I think a five year old and a two and a half year old in the waiting room. It was not a waiting room that was conducive to anything fun. The mm. five year old wanted to do things like play cards and do more structured things with me. And the two and a half year old is my two and a half year old. So was like climbing on everything. And it, it had me at the edge of my sanity and we stopped. We ended up going back to Taekwondo. We're in it now. We took about a year and a half break. But I guess my point is um, if you're going to do something for one child, that's some level of commitment. And often it's the oldest or one of the older ones. Um, just know that it's okay to have the siblings and the family schedule and the family unit have a voice. And probably mm -hmm. that voice is coming through you as the, you know, kind of family manager. But maybe, maybe it doesn't mean not doing that activity or quitting like I did. But <laughs> maybe you can find ways to, um, like, let's say you're going to a sports practice a couple times a week and you have to drive a little bit of a distance. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's worth thinking about how that impacts siblings and maybe what you can do to make the time for siblings either not terrible, not, you know, not really difficult and also not difficult on yourself. So maybe maybe it's the iPad. Maybe they get to watch a special show or maybe you don't do the iPad and maybe there's, you know, a ritual that you can put in place or an audio book you listen to in the car on the way there. I feel like um, it's very easy to get pulled into. I think we even talked about this on the first time we did this topic um episode 18 it's easy to get sort of the family's resources sucked into one kid either because that kid's really talented or they're the oldest or just that yeah. particular sport is most time consuming or farthest from yeah. the house or whatever it is they got there first too they so. got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and so um i think that can lead to maybe not for everyone but i think it can lead to some kind of resentment on mom's part mm -hmm. um if you're feeling like we're spending all our time at soccer or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, well, and I, I think there's a reason I have gravitated toward summer and fall sports that are outdoors um, uh -huh. because there's just more opportunity, maybe not for little ones, but like, you know, for slightly older kids who can kind of play independently to yes. just run around and be yes. loud mm -hmm. and not to have to be quiet and in a building and yeah. um, sitting quietly and, you know, uh, doing keeping themselves occupied. It's more about like playing with the other kids because there's right. always other siblings at those. So we've done, you know, baseball and football and uh, just for whatever reason have gravitated toward that. I've also never been afraid of saying I'm not going to be at every practice. Yep. 
which means I get to be at home making dinner for my other kids who, by the way, have to eat. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I remember getting really irritated uh, when Jacob did swim for one year and that was hilarious. He had never done, he had, you know, by knows how to swim. He knew how to, he knew how to not drown. That yeah. was, you know, yeah. so, but he, he did not know how to pre- like properly swim. competitively yeah. swim and he just decided to do it and he did, he worked really hard at it for that whole year and then he was like, I'm never doing that again. But he was in 10th grade and there was this thing where they like several times a week and at least once a week when there was a meet, they wanted like people to all come to the school and eat together for some reason. And oh, I was like, yes, our baseball, our little league <laughs> does that with And teams. I was like, but I have a family that I have to, I don't want, first of all, I don't want you to cook for my son. I want him to come home and eat with his family. Yeah. And secondly, I don't want to bring my family to the high school pool and you know what I mean? And like right. sit there, what, that sounds like torture. Sitting right. there with four wiggly kids on a bench <laughs> by a pool. Yeah. And then waiting to go eat some pasta or something yeah. that someone brought. And I got then I got to think about what I'm going to bring that's going to go with the thing that they made. Right. And like, I would so much rather just have dinner at home. Yeah. And I understand that that's a team building thing. And so yeah. I didn't really mind that Jacob did it, but I really didn't want to be involved in it. And there was a lot of pressure for, for the parents to all yeah. be involved. And I just felt like it was... It just wasn't conducive to family life. Those were people who were serious swim parents, like seri- right. like swim families. Right. And we weren't. We were just a family right. whose kid decided to do swimming. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of had a very, I don't know, like, I'm going to do this my way attitude about it. And yeah. No. Hopefully uh, that didn't rub anyone the wrong way. I'm sure. No. Did, and it, I think if you take the long view, as I always say, like, w- which is more important, like following to the letter, the you know, what everybody else is doing at the swim meet or, you know, kind of your family culture and Mm -hmm. family unit. So I do think when it's your first kid and you're new to the system, especially large sports organizations or, you know, institutions that have been doing things the same way for a long time, it's easy to just fall in and do what everybody does. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I guess my tip is just simply keep the family unit and siblings as as important as a voice as the kid who is playing. Yeah. And if it isn't working, it, you don't have to quit the whole thing, but there might be ways to opt out of the right. potluck dinner or of, you know, like carpooling so that your the younger siblings don't have to go to every practice, et cetera. So, yeah. All right. Well, um, so I guess I have another tip coming up. So uh, one of the things I was thinking of when we were talking about this is like, I think we, we think of activities as being things that are, someone else sort of <laughs> like granted the title of official activity. I yeah. don't know how to how else to put that. Like and sometimes kids don't want to do organized sports yeah. or activities someone else already got to. Yeah. Um Owen and his yo yo is a good example. Which and the funny thing is after he'd been into yo yoing for a while, it did become a club. Like there is now a yo yo club. <laughs> there was actually to. an organized <laughs> Yes. Um but he was into it for a long time. He was really into bottle flipping. Now bottle flipping made me nuts. However, he was really into it and I he like he got very creative with it. And if I could just kind of put him in a room with a a closed door and not listen, (laughs) it didn't bother me. And and it was it was really, I mean, actually very skilled thing that he was doing now. It's absolutely not going to get him a college scholarship. (laughs) Not that I would ever can, you know, even think about. Uh, pushing my kids toward any activity for the college scholarship. Right. I could go in, I could yeah. talk about that a lot more, <laughs> but um, I think that's a very, unless your kid is extraordinarily talented and at something, I think that that is um, probably not going to give you the return on investment you're yeah. looking for. That's like playing the lottery. Yeah. So, um, but you know, Owen, Owen and his yo-yo, Owen and his bottle flipping, Owen does a lot of his own things mm-hmm. and he gets very into them and he's very determined. Um, and he puts a lot of, I don't know, thought and skill and like planning and strategy into stuff. And it all, I mean, what is bottle flipping doing or yo-yoing? Well, it is a coordination thing. Mm -hmm. He sticks with something. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, teaching him how to be, how to be disciplined and commit to something. So I don't know. I think being open to those, you know, things that don't look like a sanctioned activity, but are still things that kids can get really passionate about. I think that's important as well. And I will also say that, um, you know, I did make Owen do baseball over the summer, which he's one of those kids who like doesn't want to do anything. And then and then you get him into it. He's like, OK, I had fun, but I'm never doing that again. You know, right. then he's equally at the end as, <laughs> yeah. as unenthused as he was. But I remember that was like the height of his yo-yoing time. And he was really mad at me because he'd have less time for yo-yoing. So, you know, there's a balance there, right? I yeah. wanted him to get outside and and do something that was 
a kind of part of our family culture and it wasn't a huge time commitment for him and it wasn't high pressure. So I didn't think of it as anything. I didn't really see that as like a big thing I was forcing right. him to do, but he was a little annoyed that it took away from something he felt right. more passionate about. Right. So well, the one, there. one thing I've started to notice is first of all, I hear everything that you're saying and I, I think a lot of it is sales and marketing. I think the activities yeah. that are, come in, into the forefront from like we talked about at the beginning from when baby is first born to when your four-year-old is eligible for soccer and t-ball I feel like the mainstream sports and activities are backed by the bigger organizations and and many of those organizations are really great so I'm not knocking those but it is harder to find the off the beaten path ones but like like will I mean like Owen you know getting into yo-yo and then discovering that there is a yo-yo club I feel like there are these sort of fringe or non-traditional things to explore. So, and th- and that's really cool. It just requires talking to other parents, like keeping your eyes and ears open, like taking advantage of little classes through your city or your library. Um, and maybe not, especially if your kid isn't necessarily suited to team sports and group activities, which there's a lot of kids who aren't um, just keeping your eyes and ears open for other opportunities. Um, so just this past weekend, we went to the Pokemon world championships, which happened to be in Anaheim. Um, Reed is not just into Pokemon. Like a lot of kids are with trading cards and the characters and Pokemon go and stuff, but he actually plays the card game, which is like a pretty advanced strategy game. Brian grew up playing strategy. What do you call? I don't know what you call those types of games, but magic, the gathering and Pokemon. yeah, there, there like, are World of, or did he do um, um, not World of Warcraft? What is the one that everyone has done forever? Dungeons uh, and Dragons. Is, did, did, did that started as a card game. I only know it as a video game. Oh no, anyway. it's a card game. Is yeah. it okay? Well, so it's, those... not, it's more like a it's like a dice it's a dice game. It's not oh, really okay. a card game. There are cards yeah. I think that accompany it, but right. Very much strategy. So anyway, Brian's sort of been able to help cultivate this, and and Reed can actually play. Uh, the Pokemon card game, which not very many kids can because most of them just trade. So we went to this thing and there was a like an opportunity for kids to just sign up for like a round robin tournament, like very low stakes. Like you won a pack of cards and you just played other kids. There was no, you, you didn't have to pay anything. You just signed up when you got there. And so, but there was, you know, there was a couple kids there who were, I thought, really good examples of like, this kid is probably the only, not, not my son Reed, but like these other maybe 10 or 11 year old boys. Like he's probably the only kid in his class who goes to, Pokemon card game tournaments on the weekends. And I think that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. it's it's kind of cool to have your kid find something that's maybe not traditional and that they're really, really into and can be really good at and can, you know, lead to community and friendships. And so I guess just don't be, you know, yeah, not being afraid to explore right. those non-traditional routes. So And things that maybe no one else is doing because yeah. your kid can be the one kid is doing it. Yeah. You, know? you never yeah, know. Totally. So. Um, okay, so uh, my next tip you already touched on and we'll just state it, but give yourself permission not to watch every single practice or every single session. And I'm going to include our really little preschoolers in this. You may not be able to drop them off um, and leave, but um, you don't have to watch and I feel Mm -hmm. like when we were growing up I don't feel like dance studios and gymnastic studios and martial arts studios had this like parent watching gallery my dance studio didn't and in fact a lot of them a lot of the older ones are set up in such a way you really can't watch right there was you know the studio would be kind of separate from the waiting area and there really isn't an opportunity to do that um in Clara's gymnastics there's like a they just rebuilt the building it looks great now but there's like this big glass wall and there are signs everywhere where like say like so there's the parents are out lined up on this bench okay and then inside is the gymnastics on the other side of this wall and there are signs everywhere that say like do not engage with your child yeah don't talk to your child don't engage with them because it is distracting and i go to clara's gymnastics a lot but i don't um i don't necessarily watch her the whole time because especially when she's doing things like beam if she catches my eye she falls off yeah and you're too close and sometimes I'll drop her off and go get you know go get a tea or sometimes I'll just chat with the person next to me I bring my yeah. computer they have yeah. Wi-Fi yeah. so I'm there but I'm not like staring at her the entire time yeah and I think I think the gymnastics community has really figured that out because of some high pressure parent situations like people who are really overstepping their bounds but I also feel like it it is like the mom by the pool. It is an opportunity for you to have someone else in charge of your child. And I don't think it means you're not supporting or being interested in your child. In fact, I would argue that it's probably better to 
let your kid know that you're, you know, you're not necessarily watching every minute or every practice and then let it be a special occasion when it is like if they're doing, you know, a little demonstration or a recital or something, then it's like I'm setting aside everything. So at Taekwondo, they have their belt exams. That's a big deal. Um, so watch or don't watch, but don't feel guilty about not watching, I guess. Is, yeah. And is my point. That's that is a great tip. And I also think sometimes keep in mind that if you are parenting from the bleachers or the sidelines yeah. or wherever it is you are, you're kind of undermining the teacher or the yeah. instructor yeah. or the coach. And I've, you know, everyone sees that cringy parent doing that at, yeah. a, at a game or a sporting event, like at soccer. And they're like overriding the coach's orders right. or yelling at their kids. I mean, and it can be, you don't have to be that obnoxious dude doing that to kind right. of do the same thing quietly. So I think right. even if you, if you do want to watch and that's fine, um, make sure your kid knows that you're yeah. not there to help them or like, right override the coach or instructor or you're not there. You're not, that's not your job. You're no. there to be the mom. So. And I would say that with really tiny kids, two and three and four year olds, if you have them in a little dance or swim or whatever, um, probably half the kids I know of that age behave better and focus better and do better. If you're not even in the room, I know I yeah, have kids I like agree. that with swim, especially if they have separation anxiety or they think you're right there to bail them out. I'm thinking in particular of swim because my kids haven't loved swim and we've, done it anyway at those ages um because we've always lived in places where it's kind of necessary but um so walking bringing a book and just like putting a book in front of your face I mean if you want to be there and or if you're not allowed to leave or whatever just be really clearly disengaged I think that can actually mm -hmm. help a lot of kids and and help the teacher just like you said the teachers yeah. especially these young instructors who aren't making very much money I mean give yeah. them the gift of a supportive parent who's there and available but not over involved yeah Yep, totally. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about, because we had we had touched on the idea of letting kids experiment with stuff, like maybe you're trying to get your kid interested in something, but you're not sure it's going to be like a real passion for them. Right. A lot of towns and cities and municipalities have sort of like light Ability, like light versions of them. So there's like maybe there's a city program or an after school program. Like a, um, our school has an after school um, art Thing that my kids mm -hmm. have done but you don't have to commit for more than like six or eight weeks i it's love those a week yeah uh you know you could drop in or like spring break or christmas break um summer there's camps where you can go do you know go to an art museum or go learn how to blow glass for a couple of days or something right. there's just like so many opportunities to try stuff out in a really low pressure way and a low cost way um that it's definitely worth looking into an example of that would be when before we knew if clara was going to really like gymnastics um i had her try out uh, just a tumbling class at the y because mm -hmm. it was less expensive it was like i want to say maybe a five or six week um qu uh, commitment uh -huh. and it was like 45 minutes long it was just easier on us in many many ways mm -hmm. and then she really liked it so we did end up taking her to the gymnastics studio but um but I just think there's lots of ways to try something out that may not be like as official. Yeah. Uh, another example is like um, Owen has continued to play baseball for a little city league, which is not as good as mm -hmm. the township league. A lot of the kids ditch the city league and end up going out to the township league. But I just really like, I like the park where we play. It's the mm -hmm. same park I played in when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I like that neighborhood kids play there. I just like that it's a little more laid back and mm -hmm. it just, it, yeah, they're not winning every game, but I just like the vibe more. So I think that that's, you know, you can make that choice too. You don't always have to go with the best. And it comes back, it comes back to what I said about like the the bigger marketing budgets. It's sometimes right. harder, like a low budget town rec center is probably not able to reach you on your Facebook feed with the same like enthusiasm right. as the pay to play like bigger league. So it might take some looking into. Um, I totally agree. And I think in, in episode 18, we both sang the praises of those after school programs, um, especially yeah. if you have little younger siblings. I loved those because a legger could try out something, but I, it wasn't didn't require me driving somewhere else. She just stayed an hour longer at school that day. Um, and those can lead to, like you said with Clara, those can then lead to the decision that you do want to put a little bit more time and money. So Allegra did a cooking, her first little cooking class was after school, super cheap, low commitment. And then we ended up following that. It was a, it was a cooking school that came to the school, but we ended up following that to their actual facility. And she did two years of summer, like a week of summer camp there for a, a pretty penny. I will add cooking is <laughs> not cheap because I guess, because yeah. you have to buy all the ingredients. All but, the ingredients, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So 
check out the light versions, the cheap versions. Ask around if you're not seeing them. They may exist and just not be on your radar yet. So Right. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see where I Keep am. It back over to you. Yeah, yeah, it's back over to me. Um, okay, so I have one. I have one more. Um, I have one, one more big one and then maybe a little one. But start to develop your family's kind of your like core values and how your family does sports and activities, even when your kids are really little. And don't be afraid to just say, in our family, this is what we do. And you can always change your mind. The kids won't yeah. remember. But um, we've talked a lot about sort of the peer pressure to get over involved or super involved. I feel like it always sounds better when you just decide and say, in our family, we do X. Um, yeah. So like in my family, we do swim lessons starting around age three until you know how to swim. And it's not really an option. So swim, I don't consider something as like, oh, I wonder if Violet would be interested in swim. Like that is that's different than an elective activity that the child chooses. In our family, yeah. we learn to swim because we've lived in Arizona and Southern California. And I don't want to teach my children to swim. I want someone else to do it. And I've put a fair amount of money into that because it's a priority for me. Um, right now in our family, we have piano lessons for the older too. That is right now not really an opt-in or an opt-out. It's sort of like what I consider like a baseline music education. I don't see myself making that mandatory forever. I think I will totally let them quit when it becomes gets to that point but right now like that's this is what we do you might also say in our family we have one sport per kid per season or in our family we don't start organized sports until you're six like you get to you get to decide you yeah. get to decide and even when your kids are really little you get to kind of you know like just look around observe other families who have you know maybe a little bit older than you and see how the rhythms are just you know think about what kind of it's it's idyllic to say we're going to be home around the table at six o'clock every right. night and I think Megan you and I do a pretty good job of letting our listeners know that it doesn't have to look so perfect like that right. but on the other hand you don't have to be a slave to the system and I live in a place where people are shockingly overscheduled and driving yeah. their kids <laughs> like miles and miles for travel teams and for the ones who are truly happy doing that I'm like high five to you and I know people who really are it feels great to them and they bring picnics to the ballpark and they totally make it work but if you don't enjoy it you get to decide what's right for your family so yeah and and I'll also say that these things can change and evolve over time so I think and maybe even in the last episode the last time we talked about this in episode 18 I think that was this fall I had just decided to basically surrender to yeah the you had like nuts. yeah you had like four kids in four sports or something in crazy. four sports and I what I had decided then was like for whatever reason and I felt fortunate that it actually lined up this way fall was the time when all of my kids wanted to do something and so like you know Owen was in fall baseball at the time William I think was in football um, Isaac was running cross country uh, Clara was in gymnastics so it was just really like high intensity and also one of my best friends um husbands coaches the, f the high school football team and that's kind of like a big deal around here so right. we always try to make time to go to those events and stuff at some point during the season and everyone's just busy like right. uh, jenna is the person i spend a lot of time with she's te all of a sudden teaching again so she's yeah. busy it's like everyone's in the same boat and i had just decided like i'm giving up fall <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's off like i'm not doing anything in fall except for just I mean, dinner is going to be what it is. And I'm just going to know that at night I can't do anything else. It's like, yeah. this is this is what it is. Now, just so happens this year, I may end up with only one kid in a sport, possibly. Mm -hmm. And also I have a new job mm -hmm. and I don't have the kids every day of the week because I'm getting a divorce. So like everything has suddenly changed. Yeah. And now I have to find myself going, oh, so this is the way my family related to sports before. Now it's going to look different. Yeah. And who can I lean on now, you know, to like, if I, and today's actually the cutoff day for assigning Owen up for fall ball. And I'm going to very, <laughs> very strongly encourage him to do it. Cause I wanted to do it, but yeah. it's only because my brother said, Hey, I will help. Like mm -hmm. I will, if you can't make it to the weekend or to the week um, day practices, I know the games are on Sundays. That's fine. But if you can't make it to a practice or can't get on there, I'll do it. Don't worry about it. I kind of wish I'd been better about asking for that before mm -hmm. <laughs> because I think it would have made my falls less crazy. Yeah. But sometimes you have to be in a look like a crisis before yeah. you realize like, sure. Oh, there are people who can help you and it's not even a big deal. He's yeah. going anyway. So yeah. he doesn't care. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then I think, 
two, sometimes new things come along. So I think that me and Clara and Owen and Will are all going to audition for a play together at the end of September. Oh, that's so awesome. So that's going to change things too. Maybe we won't be eating dinner at home together, but we'll all be together. So it won't really matter, you know? So I think, and we'll all be involved in it. Um, Even if we don't all get parts, I think... Maybe Will can do tech. I think he's going to be a little hard, like the ages. It's Miracle on 34th Street. So they do oh, like a okay. lot of little kids. Oh, yeah. But they're not going to need like, I don't think a kid William's age, but he can yeah. do tech. And that's yeah. a good thing for him to learn. So that could yeah. be something we really do all together, which means maybe we're going to be grabbing drive through yeah. more than I would like. Yeah. Um, but it's just things change and, and fluctuate, I guess. Yes. Just to add on to what you're saying. Yeah. That those values can change over time and with different kids and your lifestyle changes and all that stuff right so. and but everything you just said is still coming back to the family unit like what right. works in this now ever-changing like sort of complicated picture of you and the kids like what is going to work this fall and it's still coming yep. back to you know not one kid's like driving passion right um, it's like overruling but, everything else right yeah. right um yeah well i'll just give a little recap of what we're doing this fall since you touched on that um and my final tip was never say never because i signed up to assistant coach a four-year-old soccer team this fall and i would never have said <laughs> that i would do that but you mentioned how soccer or anything outdoors is the you know other kids can run around and because it's violet who's gonna do soccer the other she was t- just the siblings, gonna run the whole time she, yeah. she? It's gonna she's awesome. gonna be out there so i might as well be with her number right. one but also the the siblings are older that's the first time i haven't been needing to watch younger siblings the siblings mm. will be seven and nine and they can play more independently which will then allow me i just i mean i'm not head coaching i'm just assistant coaching four-year-old right. so i'll just be out there helping with the kids i think that will be good for violet i know every kid responds a little differently to that but um so never say never because if you are not a uh, team sports type person you may end up coaching soccer yeah um i have yeah. to say in the i had to do a little bit of like online training to even be involved in ayso and i was really impressed with just their their values around how to treat kids how how fun this should be for the kids and they've changed at least here locally ayso changed from when reed did four-year-old soccer to there's no practice during the week at all you just wow. scrim- you you practice for 20 or 30 minutes saturday morning and then do a 20 minute scrimmage and you're done Wow. So it's okay, one hour. Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we're looking forward to that. So Violet, and I think soccer will be a great, great fit for her. My other kids had a hard time because they weren't very fast. I can and totally see Violet doing soccer. Right. Because she never yes. stops moving. And right. she's, really, she stops. she's really fast. And my mm-hmm. other kids didn't have as much fun because if you can't get to the ball, you, you can't do any it. of the things right. you learn in practice. They, you know, they would be cute in their practice and they'd learn to, you know, whatever, stop the ball and kick. But then you'd get to a scrimmage or a game and they, they're just kind of wandering around because they just weren't very fast. And she is fast and she's the most naturally athletic. So she is doing little AYSO four-year-old soccer, which I was pleasantly surprised to learn does not involve a weeknight practice. And then Allegra and Reed are continuing Taekwondo, but just coincidentally where their belt levels are, they will actually be in the same class instead of two oh. different Oh, nice. So okay. we're majorly consolidating there. Um, and then the older kids have piano once a week. Um, and Violet is pushing me to do music together, which is um, it's a parent and child mixed age music program. They have it all over and we've done it before. And I actually really love it. That is one mommy and me that I have enjoyed. And she remembers it from when she was like three and they oh. age out at five. So it's, it's babies through age five. I do really... I really like the program. I've probably talked about it before on this show. So I haven't decided it's, I don't know if she's remembering it be just like kind of nostalgically, but then that makes me nostalgic. Cause she's right. my last one at home. There won't yeah. be any more like mommy and me type thing. So I don't know. That might be a last minute decision, but um, yeah, so that's what, so our fall actually will be pretty low key, especially with the Taekwondo consolidating into just they're in the same class and then yeah. soccer just on Saturday. So yeah, well, we Ruby does like, um, and Luna both do uh-huh. AYSO soccer. I've known a lot of people who've done AYSO soccer and they've all had a good experience. With yeah. It, so yeah. yeah, the one thing they don't, they don't cancel games for rain. <laughs> that was what I oh, made a joke yeah. with someone we were at um I don't remember what it was, maybe an event of some sort. And the baseball parents were all there because baseball had been canceled because it was raining, oh. but none of the soccer parents were. <laughs> I mean, and somebody brutal. made the joke like soccer 
they don't cancel unless there's like lightning on the field. Oh, so that's, I just well, laugh. you know, our fall is so <laughs> hot here. That oh, it's yeah. Like, and so and that is another reason why I was picturing like a 4 p.m. practice once a week. Uh, and that is right. the hottest time yes. of day. And the kids have been at school all day. So, yeah, finding out that it's just this Saturday. And they always put the littlest kids early on Saturday mornings because it does get hot later. So I think our games will be at like 9, 930 and then we'll be done. So, nice. I'm, yeah. So anyway, it'll be cute. So, OK, well, I feel like this was a, a good discussion of this yeah. topic. Again, it's episode 18. If you want more on this, probably some of the same, but different. Um, and then what else? We've got Katie coming up. So stay on the line with us. You'll hear Katie and I talk <laughs> for t- 10 minutes or so coming up at the end. And then we've got we- that special episode coming up soon, right? Yes. The one with Yes. Um, the one where we air live, or yes, where yes, we yes. record live. Okay, so yes. Um, so that will be Friday of this week. So Friday, September 1st, you will hear the episode that we recorded live in Orange County last yep. week, kind of. Um, so yeah, definitely watch your podcast feed for that. And everything we talked about today will be at themomhour.com. And this was episode 117. We'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. I am here with Katie Addis. Hey, Katie. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? It's going good. So for new listeners, Katie joins me about once a month. She has a toddler and a baby, and she shares what's going on in her life as a mom of two little ones. So we do that through one struggle, one discovery of something that's working really well, and one success she's had. So let's dive in, Katie. Okay. Well, Sarah, before we dive in, can I just tell all the listeners out there what I'm wearing right now? Because okay. you guys, it got the Sarah stamp. I was a little hesitant based on what I was wearing. I'm wearing a graphic tee and longtime listeners, you know that Sarah has just a general distaste for overly cliched graphic tees. And when that episode aired, I literally went into my closet and was like, wow, Sarah would just be so dismayed. Oh, that's so sad. It was like one of our more judgmental segments which is saying a lot because Megan and I are not very judgy but that was in a fashion episode recently and in my own defense I don't dislike you know what we're talking about you guys right like tanks and tees that have a clever saying on them I don't dislike them as a rule I just feel like there's so many of them and a lot of them have become really derivative and kind of corny so it's more that I would say I'm highly selective so I open my door and Katie looks super adorable today (laughs) and and um, is wearing this like swingy t-shirt that says can't adult today. And I was like, okay, that is really cute. So Why now I'm just, applicable? I'm constantly in the position of having to take it back. And I, my work. I didn't mean to call you to the carpet today, Sarah. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So okay. let's dive in. So I did have a different struggle, but as I was leaving my house today, I was literally encountering a struggle moments before walking out the door. So I thought I would share that to be spontaneous right, and in the go. moment. Okay. Um, so Kyle, bar- my husband, he barbecued hot dogs for lunch and I was vacuuming upstairs, came down saw Annalie about my toddler who's two and a half about to take a bite of her hot dog and I saw that it was not cut in Mm. half Sarah I struggle with hot dogs yeah I chokeable things make me nervous I'm not we're on the same page yeah this is not an area where I'm super laid back um so but here's what my experience if I can offer a laid back perspective um those with little babies and like young toddlers it seems like they're choking all the time. And what I learned over time, because you know how they'll do that thing where they get too much in their mouth and they kind of gag and like yes. splutter. That I feel like is actually a good thing. That's what the gag reflex is for. Right. Kids put too much in their mouth. Um, I, f- I feel like it's a lot less likely to have a full um, like can't breathe choking experience from that type of thing than it is from like the top five and the top five or I've just made up the number five, but whole grapes. Yes. Hot dogs, oh, yes. Um, popcorn is a, is high on the list. What else? What Baby am I forgetting? Carrots. Baby carrots. So anything that like, if you think of it's like circular. a wine cork, like think of how a wine cork completely stops the flow of oxygen in that perfectly sized hole. Right. right? So I feel like where I did become more relaxed over time was like, let's say you're cutting up chicken or cutting up some fruit. I mean, the pieces can get bigger and bigger. Kids can get better and better at chewing those up. I still stayed really, really careful about anything that was that like circular circular shape Um, until maybe I'm trying to think of what age I just started letting them 
eat a hot dog? That was going to be my question. Probably three, three, three and a half. I mean, oh, really? I feel like she's okay. getting close. Okay. Um, we always like with my kids, we always say small bites, small oh, bites same. and chew, small bites same. and chew. I still say that. I mean, my kids are older and I still say that. So that's our table um, mantra too. And then, and then I also just think like, yeah, if I were, if a babysitter was watching them, I probably wouldn't even serve that. Do you same. know what I mean? Oh yeah, like, me too. So I don't know. I, I feel like I'm with you there. It's yeah. like, but it just, it gets so much less dire because they get better at chewing and, you know, just, it, they just grow out of that danger. Anyone yeah. can choke on a hot dog. I know. I mean. It's true. My my oldest child actually eats probably in the most choking hazard way because she eats fast. Oh, uh, okay. And puts a lot in there. And she's nine. So, yeah. I yeah, I guess you. you have to know your child, too, and you. their ability. So, how do you usually cut a hot dog? Like, well, vertically okay. in and half then, so that yeah. it um, is kind of. Um, I don't yeah. know what shape yeah, that be. Like a half circle. A, a, in a, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and while we're on the subject, I just really quickly want to knock all lollipops, hard candy, yeah. dum dums, yeah. um, tootsie roll pops, yeah. anything yeah. in that. What are hard candy companies yeah. that cater yeah. to children yeah. thinking? Yeah. No, like a slippery hard hard candy. Like yes. a, yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. I want I want lollipop reform. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> but lollipops, if it stays on the stick. But that's my concern is that it doesn't. Yeah. I don't think I cared so much about that. If I was giving my kid a lollipop, it was a dire situation. So just, <laughs> yeah. uh, just choke. Yeah, we don't, we don't do lollipops. Choke. We don't do lollipops because of that reason. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Okay. My discovery is I have discovered the love of a minivan. Oh, this is a good one. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the land of the minivan. Thank you. I joined the club and I'm just discovering right and left um, features that I never knew existed that really weren't draws necessarily yeah. to make us make the leap to a minivan. Just side but bonuses. that are just, yeah, side bonuses. So really why we made the minivan decision in the first place was two reasons, space and then ease of just everybody getting in mm -hmm. and out of the car. Mm -hmm. And while other vehicles would satisfy the whole space thing um not all vehicles would satisfy the yeah. ease situation so let me tell you about two of my favorite features okay. so i love i just discovered this um you can fit a four and you probably know this as a minivan owner but you can fit a four drink tray holder okay just squarely on top of your center console oh no slipping can you do that on your center console i don't think i've ever tried Yes. Okay. Yeah. So like the Starbucks, like, yeah, that's what you mean. Like the that's like drink mean. caddy. Oh, the drink caddy. Exactly. It fits perfectly. Like it was meant to be. Like it was meant to be. Kyle Wait, so like, do you open the center console and like nestle it in there? No, you just stick it right on top. Just stick it right on I top. I do like that. Our, so Katie got a Toyota Sienna, which is what I have. And I do like that there's a slight nonstick surface on that top of the center console, even yep. just for your phone or just anything that you set right there. It's a mm -hmm. nice and it has a very slight. Dip. Dip. So it's like a mm -hmm. it's like a little square tray. So I can see that. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's your next feature? Uh, my next favorite feature is the dual air vents, which we thought we're going to solve just all of our temperature control problems, right. and um, and they have. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I now that I have kids who can like request certain temperature, too hot, too cold, just the ability to be able to do that. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So we thought we were being so forward thinking way back when we got a crossover vehicle. Mm -hmm. This is pre any kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that that ability or that absence of a dual vent control mm -hmm. system was huge because the only ventilation in that sort of vehicle mm -hmm. was from the back bottom of the center console yeah and that doesn't do enough which with it, a rear facing, yeah, rear -facing car, seat, car seat that yeah. child is out of luck yeah yeah oh that's so true yay well welcome to the club oh and Thank listeners you. megan and i did a whole episode one time on our cars and our various like how your car fits into your mom life so if you missed that one you can go back and hear all about my minivan and Megan's new, like, grown-up kid's car. Like, no more car seats car. So, okay. <laughs> okay, and then a success is my toddler, Anna Lee. Finally, her skills are catching up a little bit to where her will has mm -hmm. been for a very long time. Like, so, I do it myself, that type of... I do yeah. it myself. No, I can do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Mama, go downstairs, yeah. please. Mama, no help. Yeah. Um, finally, she can actually in a skilled pretty skilled fashion do things like buckle her own car seat nice. put on her own shoes pump her soap 
she actually even opened the step stool the other day nice. to get up to the kitchen sink. Um, and it's been probably six months of that tug of war yeah. of wanting. She really didn't have right. the skills. But wanting or, to. But wanting yeah. to. And just watching, you know, taking that back seat yeah. while you were trying to really push yeah. control, but still provide guidance um, and help. Yeah. It was just. Well, good job for you for standing back. And now she's like a super competent two and a half year old. It was hard, but yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So that's a success. Yay. Okay. So we'll wrap up this little segment. Um, but I was thinking, Katie, we should let people know, or we should find a way to pull all of your segments together now that we've done, what do you think? Like eight maybe yeah. or something like that. Um, so check the show notes for this episode, you guys, and we'll either link to all of them, or if I get really fancy, maybe we can um, kind of isolate those little segments oh, and pull like them together. So if we have new listeners who are new moms and want to just binge the Katie stuff, a we'll new mom find, audio collage. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds we'll find so a way to do that. It, this is the type of thing that I'm declaring it here right now, which means <laughs> we'll have to do it, but head to the show notes <laughs> for this episode. And then um, we'll have some, some place to direct you for more of the best of Katie. All right. Bye guys. Bye. Thanks, Katie.